What's up guys, Zach here with Dr. EyeballMD. Today we're gonna take a quiz on the eyes. This is made for children, so let's hope we pass. Let's go. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Zach. I'm a second year ophthalmology resident, and we talk about everything from medical school, getting into medical school, being a doctor, ophthalmology, that kind of cool stuff. Consider subscribing to the channel. If we can get to 1,000 subscribers, I think YouTube lets me do live streams, and I can answer your guys' questions um, during live streams and stuff, so that'd be cool. But let's get into the video. We are going to take this quiz. Dr. Mike made a video like this, and he took a quiz um, on this kidshealth.org, and I think he only got an 80, a B. So... Let's hope we can do as good as he did to the website here and let's do uh, the section on the eyes and let's see how we do. So how large, about how large is the eye is our first question. Uh, as big as a basketball, a little smaller than an apple, uh, as big as a ping pong ball or a little bigger than a tennis ball. So it's not as big as an app, it's not as big as a basketball for sure. Um, unless you are a giant squid. So I think they're getting a ping pong ball here. It's actually a little smaller than a ping pong ball. I've taken people's eyes out in the uh, operating room. Uh, people with like blind, painful eyes that uh, need to have their eyes removed. And when it's sitting in the little cup, it's about like that. It's not quite as big as a ping pong ball. It's actually smaller than you would think. But that's what they're getting at here, about how large, about like a ping pong ball. All right, what is the biggest part of the eye and gives the eye its shape? So what keeps like it formed and uh, is like the main like mass of the eye, volume of the eye? Uh, it's going to be vitreous body, rods, pupil, or lens. That's going to be vitreous body. That's like the gel inside the eye. So vitreous body on two. It's about four to five cc's. All right, number three. What helps us see color? So rods, cones, lens, or the color wheel. You guys know this one. I'll narrow it down for you. Rods or cones? Cones. Cones see color. So your fovea is the center part of your macula, center portion of your vision, and it's all cones. It's all responsible for that sharp, uh, clear color vision. Most of your cones are actually located percentage-wise outside of the fovea, but the fovea itself is all cones, and that's what helps us see color. So three is color. Guys, I think we're doing pretty well on this so far. Um, this is not quite as hard as board exams, so... I think we're doing good though. I could see how this would be pretty difficult, especially for kids though, like younger kids. All right, so number four, cones team up with blank so that you can see the total picture. So glasses, lens, pupil, or rods. Uh, it could be any of these really, um, but they're getting it rods. So rods are the other photoreceptor cells. All right, number five, what shuts automatically to protect the eye from possible danger? So iris, eyelash, eyelid, or lens. Uh, for, okay, so for a second I was thinking iris um, just because it constricts to keep light out, but they're getting an eyelid here for sure, eyelid. Uh, so there's actually a reflex. So if you touch your cornea, uh, it sends a message through your fifth cranial nerve, your trigeminal nerve, to your brain, and through a reflex pathway through the seventh cranial nerve, tells your orbicularis oculi muscles to contract um, and close your eyelid. So basically if you touch your eye, uh, the reflex is to blink. Um, and so they're getting an eyelid here. It's actually interesting, like a lot of the patients I'll see in the ER with really bad burns or injuries to their face, a lot of times their eyes will be completely fine. I think this is just because that reflex is so quick and fast and your body's just so good at protecting the eyes. All right, moving on. Number six, which part is the colorful part of the eye? So pupil, iris, eyeball, or cornea? So I guess it depends on what color you're talking about, but they're getting at iris here for sure. So iris is the colored part. I bet most people got that one for sure. All right, number seven. Uh, when the image hits the retina, the image is upside down. What flips the image over so that it's right side up? Lens, retina, optic nerve, or brain? Um, this could be tricky, especially for kids. Uh, definitely tricky. So maybe even losing some people uh, wanting to pick lens here. Um, but the light that passes through goes through the lens before it gets to your retina, so it's flipped before it ever gets to the retina, um, and then it lands on your retina upside down. So it has to be flipped in your brain right side up, so that you perceive it right side up. So we're gonna go with brain on that one. That's, that could be tough for a kid, for sure. All right, what part is the great messenger at the back of your eye? I've never heard any part of the eye called the great messenger. 
retina, optic nerve, sclera, or blood vessels. So I guess they're getting at the fact that the optic nerve transmits information from your retina to your brain, the occipital of your brain. So we're going to go with optic nerve. I'm going to start calling it the great messenger in clinics, see if anybody knows what I'm talking about. They won't. Um, okay, so tears help your eyes by washing away germs, keeping them from drying out, keeping dust or other particles out, or all of the above. This one's going to be all of the above. So the tear film is actually super amazing, super complicated. It's at least three layers. Some people say more. Uh, you have like an oil layer, an aqueous layer, and... Uh, a, muc a mucus mucin layer. So the the watery layer, the aqueous layer, is covered by oil on top, like a oily layer. So if you think of like filling up a bathtub full of water and then pouring oil on it, that oil makes a layer that keeps the water from evaporating away, just like uh, the oil layer on your tear surface keeps your tears from evaporating away. Um, and that's one of the reasons people get evaporative dry eyes, because the oil layer isn't there and their tears evaporate. Anyways, we can talk about that later. Um, anyway, so here, all the above, tears do all that stuff. Um, okay, so to correct fuzzy vision, many people wear hats, goggles, glasses, or binoculars. Uh, I guess we're talking about refractive error with fuzzy vision. Oops. Um, so we'll go with glasses for that one. That one's pretty easy. And then I think that's it. So just 10 questions. Okay, let's see how we did. All right. Do you guys disagree with me on any of those? Let's see if we got them right. Um, how large is the eye? As big as a ping pong ball. The biggest part is the vitreous body. We got that one. What helps us see color? Uh, the cones. We got that one. And the cones team up with the rods. We got that one. We have not missed one. What shuts automatically to protect the eye from possible danger? Eyelid. Um, what is the colorful part of the eye? The iris. Um, and what flips the image? Um, so it's not upside down. The brain. I bet some people miss that one for sure. Uh, what part is the great messenger at the back of your eye? So the optic nerve. And tears help your eyes um, do all of those things that we talked about, all of the above. And to correct fuzzy vision, people wear glasses, guys. We got them all. Did you guys get them all? I hope so. So we get to keep our ophthalmology card because we got them right. Let's try another one, though. Let's actually do one of the other. Uh, like body parts and see if I still remember anything besides the eyeballs so let's go back all right so they have bones brain digestive system ears I'm just gonna close my eyes and just tap the screen let's just see what we come up with heart and circulatory system okay this will be good I bet we don't get all of these <laughs> hopefully you guys will okay how many chambers does the heart have Four. So that's going to be your right and left atrium, right and left ventricle. Blood comes in the right atrium, pumped into the right ventricle, goes out to the lungs, comes back into the left atrium, pumped into the left ventricle, and the left ventricle is the strong, strongest one that pumps it out to the rest of the body. So we're going to go with four chambers. You guys can't quote me on anything I say. It's not about the eyes here. All right. Heart and circulatory system, movement of blood through the heart and body is called circulation, locomotion, ventriculation, heart pump. We're going to go circulation. All right. The beating sound your heart makes comes from blood going in the wrong direction, valves closing, the heart skipping beats, your ears playing tricks on you. This is tough. Kids would not know this, I feel like. Um, but that's a good way to learn. Uh, so the beating sound actually comes from, do you do you know this? It's valves closing. So when the mitral and uh, tricuspid valves close and when the aortic and pulmonic valves close, that gives you the lubbed up, lubbed up. It's when those valves are closing. And depending on like how those sounds can be uh, made and like the different patterns that they occur in, it can kind of tip you off to different pathology in the heart. But that's what the sound is, is actually the valves closing. Um, okay, so question four. With circulation, the heart provides your body with oxygen, nutrients, a way to get rid of waste. So, of course, oxygen. Um, also, nutrients are transported in the blood. A way to get rid of waste. Yes. Um, through the kidneys, through the liver. So we're going to go with all the above on that one. All right. Are you guys doing good? Are these harder than the eye ones? Maybe the eye ones are harder. Um, 
Okay, the atria are the upstairs chambers of the heart, and these parts are the downstairs chambers. So, valves, ventricles, blood, are candy hearts. Ventricles, we talked about that. Right, right ventricle, left ventricle. All right. What wall separates the left side and right side of the heart? So, the ventricle, the atrium, the septum, or the great wall? The great wall of China. Um, septum. So you have a septum between the atria, septum between the ventricles. Sometimes those don't close, and you have blood that can go from ventricle to ventricle from between the atria. Um, if your foramen ovale doesn't close in the atria, uh, that's not ideal. So septum. All right, seven. I guess we have four more here. Okay, what parts act like doors that control blood flow in the heart? Valves, heart dams, kidneys, and chambers gonna be the valves they're one-way valves so they open blood can flow through and then they close and it can't flow back at least it's not supposed to it may have a little bit of regurgitation um, but it shouldn't shouldn't be flowing in the wrong direction that's called a regurgitative flow uh, what organ removes waste from blood heart lungs eyes and kidneys uh, so not the heart it's lungs if you want to think of carbon dioxide is waste um, more of a metabolic byproduct eyes or kidneys so they're getting at the kidneys uh, which are kind of the filter for the blood um okay you can keep your heart strong by eating heart-shaped candy that may do the opposite um, doing activities like playing outside riding your bike and swimming smoking or sleeping 18 hours a day i'm gonna go with doing activities playing outside and riding your bike the heart's a muscle, uh, you exercise it with aerobic activity, that's gonna keep it strong. Um, these are tubes that carry blood back to the heart, arteries, veins, pipes, and tubas. So, you probably down to arteries or veins. The easiest way to remember this one is uh, A for away, so arteries away, take blood away from the heart, and veins bring it back. So, veins bring blood back to the heart. Deoxygenated blood. All right, guys, we got 100. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, four chambers to the heart. Movement of blood through the heart is called circulation. Uh, beating is from the valves closing, like we talked about. Um, that gets really complicated, really complex, and it's actually really hard to actually listen and pick up on that uh, and figure out you know, if someone has like pulmonic stenosis or aortic regard or aortic stenosis. That can be pretty difficult to pick up in med school. Um, uh, okay, circulation provides your body with oxygen, nutrients, and waste, uh, getting rid of waste, all of the above. The atria are upstairs, downstairs are the ventricles, we got that one. What wall separates the left side and right side of the heart? Septum, we talked about. And what controls blood flow in the heart? The valves. What organs remove waste from blood? Kidneys and doing activities is obviously going to strengthen your heart and the tubes that bring blood back to the heart are the veins. Guys, we got them all. This is actually a super cool website, kidshealth.org. It kind of, I think, tries to teach kids basic like medical information. I think maybe it gets kids interested in medicine early. So cool website. Check it out. Try some of these quizzes. If you guys want, we can do an actual really hard quiz, like an ophthalmology questions type quiz, and go over some like really tough ophthalmology questions. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. My name is Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD, and I'll see you guys in the next one.